grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We are God's open house. We welcome everyone, we take care of each other, and we help people in need. As we begin, I want to let you know about a few things that are coming up in the near future for us. The first is that on August 23rd, we'll be holding a prayer service for racial justice here at the church outdoors. You'll need to bring a mask and a chair at 7 p.m. to join us for this service. Also coming up, we are making plans for our Sunday school year and we need some feedback from parents and teachers. So we've set up two Zoom meetings, one on August 16th and one on August 22nd for you to join us so that we can have a little bit of better understanding of what we need to do, what works and what doesn't work for your families. So please join us at seven on the 16th or the 22nd and we'll have a questionnaire out soon so you can have a better idea of what we're gonna talk about. <sighs> Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and I will give you rest. Whatever has gone on for you this last week, however tired you may be or excited you may be, here you are in the presence of God. Let us take a moment to rest, to listen, and to feel again the Spirit of God moving in our lives. Come on in. Let us worship God. Let us begin by calling ourselves to worship with Psalm 118, a reminder that God accepts us just as we are. The stone that the builders rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is, it is marvelous, marvelous in our, our eyes. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad in it. In it.
The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Almighty and merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have disobeyed your will. Forgive us our selfishness and our disobedience. Return us to your path and guide us to the still waters of your healing grace. Renew in us a desire to be faithful to you that we may follow you all the days of our life. Even when our cups run dry, God's grace overflows. Even when our plates are empty, God's generosity overflows. And even when our hearts feel barren, God's love overflows. Friends, you have been called and claimed by God for all things. And by the abundance of God's grace and by the power of God's love, your sins have been forgiven. Peace is good. We all want it, but we can't have it unless we give it to each other. Let's take a moment and offer the peace of Christ to one another. If you're worshiping with us on Facebook this morning, take a minute and make a sign of peace in the comments to your neighbors. If you're joining us in some other time or in some other way, simply join us in prayer for peace for each other and for our world. Hi, and welcome to our special time for the young and young at heart. I'm here in our butterfly garden, which our Earth Care team put together this year to support pollinators like butterflies and bees as part of our commitment to take care of the earth around us. And it is buzzing with butterflies right now. Butterflies are a beautiful way for us to talk about what happens when God gets a hold of us. See, a butterfly begins as a caterpillar. It is bound to the ground. It is not so colorful. It is not able to fly. And the caterpillar, when it comes time, is, uh, puts itself into a cocoon or makes a cocoon around itself. And when it comes out, it is something completely new, something beautiful and spectacular and holy. When we turn to God and when we let God's love transform us, we too have a transformation. In the Bible, it says, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has come. That's why we say that we are born again. That is, we have been made new by the love of Christ. God wants to change us into something new and holy and beautiful like a butterfly. When we come to Christ and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are made new. Our sins are washed away. Our old life is wiped clean and a new slate is set before us for us to love and serve the Lord. 
Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love that transforms us. Send us out to be pollinators, spreading your love and transformation wherever we go. Amen. Thanks for spending this time with me. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 17 through 20. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue is parched with thirst, I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together so that all may see and know and all may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. A midlife crisis is a pretty common concept, right? Not everybody has one. Not everybody experiences that particular feeling or need. And not everybody has the resources to dramatically change their life all of a sudden. People have child care responsibilities or elder care responsibilities. But we get the concept. Sometimes life loses its flavor. And we talk about it in our lives. But we don't talk about it in terms of faith, even though it's just as common. Just about everyone's faith has some long stretch of time where they are wandering in the wilderness. Barbara Haggerty calls this experience spiritual ennui. We have times in our lives where it, it simply feels like we're not connected to the faith that once shaped our lives and we can't figure out how to get that connection back. We used to see God everywhere. Now we see God nowhere. Where once we looked up and we saw heaven. And now we look up and we just see the ceiling. The feeling of purpose and connection that made us who we are is just gone. Every faith has long stretches in the wilderness. The honeymoon period of new faith ends. Big changes happen in our lives or no changes happen in our lives for 20 years. And we can't look at the world in the same way that we used to look in the world. Maybe you were a part of the beginning of a new ministry. And when it began, it was growing each and every day, and it was getting more and more exciting. But now you're eight years in, and it's the same volunteers, and it's like pulling teeth to get anybody to do anything. And it just feels emptier than it felt before. Or maybe you have been through something hard, and you have prayed and prayed and prayed, but you just feel lost, like everything you do is underwater. Everybody experiences this sometimes. Even people famous for their commitment to faith, Mother Teresa, Thomas Merton, mention long stretches where they don't feel like they're hearing from God in the same way they used to, or even at all. Scripture is full of examples, too. Moses spent years in the wilderness before God appeared to him in a burning bush. God gave Joseph dreams, but God also left Joseph languishing in an Egyptian prison for years. The whole book of Judges is just this one pattern. God raising a deliverer, and then a few years later, the people's memory starts to fade, and they panic, and they turn to more uh, tangible gods. Part of the reason that the word of God is so filled with words of hope is that the people of God were so often filled with despair. Few of us want to admit it to others at church. It feels like a, a failure or an admission of guilt. But it shouldn't be. 
Part of the journey of faith involves making it through the doldrums, surviving times in the wilderness when your well of faith has run dry. So this week and for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about what happens when our well of faith runs dry, what to do and what not to do, and maybe even whether or not there's anything you can do. Simply, it's worth knowing that sometimes things will be hard for a long time. And this week, I want to talk about widening your field of vision. When you're wandering in the wilderness and you're not sure that God is with you, widen the field of vision. Widen your view of the world. You remember a few months ago, I talked about going to see a meteor shower with my parents. And we went out and we set a blanket out and uh, we looked up at the sky and I looked up and I saw nothing. And it was cold and I gave up. What I didn't tell you is that a few years later, we moved to Texas, and in Texas, I really did learn to see shooting stars. The sky truly is bigger in Texas. There are fewer trees, and that means the horizon is always off in the distance. And dry weather means that there are rarely clouds to cover up the stars. So if you go out on a starlit night, the sky truly stretches your imagination. And what I learned living out there is that the way to see shooting stars isn't about timing, making sure you're there for a meteor shower, or patience waiting a long time. It's about learning to widen your field of view. Even on a regular night, if you can see enough sky, you can see a shooting star. But you have to expand your field of vision to see differently from the way that you normally do. When I was a teenager, I was a lifeguard, and they taught us to look at the pool differently. They said, don't ever focus on any one place because you'll miss what's going on. So you're constantly sort of scanning. They said, don't focus and widen your view. When something is different, when something breaks the pattern, then you can zoom in, then you can look and see what's going on. But you need to see the whole pool all at once. In the same way, if you're going to look for a shooting star, you need to see the whole sky all at once. You can't just look at one section and then another and then another. You've got to widen your field of vision to see the whole sky at once. When you can see the whole sky and not just a small part of it, you're much more likely to see shooting stars. When you widen the view that you have of your life, you're much more likely to see the small miracles, the, the small miracles that make it up. A narrow view can keep us from seeing what God is doing around us. Imagine if you were one of the Hebrews wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and you kept your head down just looking at what is in front of your feet you would have missed the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire, the quail, the tabernacle, and all of these other signs of God's faithfulness. But when we widen our view, looking beyond what's in front of us or what we're focusing on, we become more capable of seeing what God is doing around us. What you're looking for are things that break the pattern and let you see that God is awake and alive and moving in this world. Pete just read the words from Isaiah 41. Isaiah wrote to a people who had spent 50 years wondering if God still cared about them, wondering if God even still existed. And what God promised them through Isaiah was this, when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue is parched with thirst, I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together, so that all may see and know, all may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. A cypress in the desert. If you don't know it, a cypress is a swamp tree. It thrives in a few feet of water with most of its root structures submerged under the swamp and knobby cypress knees poking out. It's not the kind of tree you'd find in a desert. Come to think of it, neither are the acacia, the myrtle, or the olive. This passage is God's promise of abundance, but it's also a guide to how we can know that God is still with us. It is in things that break the pattern. It's in surprising love 
That's how you know it was God. We know that it was God because God loves to break through, to show us something new and something different, because God sets cypresses in the desert. God puts things in places where we would not expect them. Maybe you have been in the doldrums for a long time, and you've been getting letters that tell you how appreciated and valued you are, but they just don't feel like they mean anything anymore. Maybe you can look at them again. Maybe you can widen your view and and recognize that any sign of love is a sign of God's faithfulness. Maybe it's a, a, a congratulation or an expression of appreciation or a new relationship that has the opportunity to blossom in your life. But what we're looking for is things that break the pattern, the pattern of frustration, the pattern of misery, the pattern of dryness that swallows up the faith that we try to have. So as we go forth into our life, we look for cypresses in the desert, glimpses of growth that break the pattern of dryness. Widen your view beyond what's in front of you so that you can see on the horizon the pillar of cloud and fire, so that you can see beyond and recognize what is going on at the horizon. Finally, and I can't stress this enough, regular daily prayer will change your life. The rhythm of daily prayer changes your heartbeat. It beats a pathway between you and God. So pray when you feel like it and pray when you don't feel like it. Pray when you're happy, pray when you're afraid, and pray when you feel nothing at all. Even when it feels like it is a waste of words, Writer George Bernano says, if you can't pray, at least say your prayers. Even going through the motions, building that constant connection is a way of sustaining yourself. It's a way of widening your eyes because if you check in with God every single day, you open your eyes to a much bigger field of vision. You open your eyes to the possibility that God can act in every single one of your days. At any given moment, God could surprise you. Yeah, sometimes things will be dry and maybe even for a long time. That's faith. Renita Weems says this is the spiritual journey, learning how to live in the meantime, between the last time you heard from God and the next time you hear from God. So even if it has been a really long time, know that it's coming. And try this. Take one question about your life. Ask it over and over and over and wait and look for the answers. You never know. Maybe you will see that cypress in the desert, the miracle that breaks the pattern and restores you again into the joy, the wholeness, and the peace of deep and abiding faith. Now let us join together in that prayer, saying these words that have been carried for us for generation from the great cloud of witnesses that has come before. Let us proclaim our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Everything that is good comes from God. In joyful thanks, let us give generously to God out of our abundant blessings. We have set aside this time to remember God's faithfulness and to prayerfully make our offerings to the Lord. You can give to the church online at pitmanprez.org slash giving or mail in a check to the church office.
us pray together for ourselves, for each other, and for this world that God loves so much. Almighty God, we remember that there is a balm in Gilead that makes the wounded whole. And we see all of this brokenness in our world. We see brokenness in our lives, families fractured, divorce, death, illness. And we see brokenness, brokenness in our economy, people losing jobs, people losing businesses, evictions, people wondering how they are going to get by. And we see all of this brokenness in our political systems and structures, gridlock, inability to accomplish things, an unwillingness to reach out across the aisle and work together. Lord, we ask that you would restore all that is broken. We ask that you would heal our broken lives with your love. Teach us again how to care for each other and for ourselves. Watch over our families. Strengthen the bonds that are between us the bonds of love, faithfulness, and care for each other. Lord, we ask that you heal the brokenness in our economy, fix inequalities, and help us to commit ourselves to fix inequality in our system. Provide in your abundance housing for the houseless, food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, love for those in need of community. Lord, we ask that you would restore the brokenness in our politics. Teach us once again to work together. Guide us in one purpose, with one goal in mind, that is the uplift of all your people that we might, in this moment of challenge and difficulty, be forged into a new nation of love, of peace, of hope, and of grace for each other. We pray especially for those who've been affected by the pandemic. We ask, Lord, that you would take this pandemic from us, reveal to us a cure, Stop its spread. Restore us to what our lives could be if we were not stuck at home, away from each other. We lift up all those who are sick, and we ask that you would fill them with your spirit, which is the breath of life, and let them breathe fully and easily. Heal them, Lord. We lift up all who have died, the 160,000, and we ask that you would make space of peace for them so they might rest where there are no tears or sadness or mourning, but life everlasting. Lord, we lift up the families of those who have lost someone, of those who are struggling to keep someone from being lost, those who are struggling themselves. We ask, Lord, that you would strengthen them to care, to hope, and to be there for each other. And we ask that you would fill them with your presence. So even in the darkest and most challenging times, they are not alone. Lord, we pray for all those who are lost, wandering in the wilderness, not knowing where they need to be, who they need to be. And we ask, Lord, that you would restore us all into your loving arms. Lord, all these things we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave sight to the blind who healed the lame, who cared for the widow and the orphan and the forgotten, and who loved us so much that he showed us the path to life is loving each other. 
as he loved us enough to die for us. And we pray now the words that he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us continue our worship in song. To go into your week with your eyes wide open because you never know what you might see. And may the grace, mercy, and peace, the love of God be with you and abide with you this day, this week, and forever. Amen.